All right. Hi, everyone. So uh, thank you all for joining us today to learn about open orgs. We're really excited to present the service um, that's so vital to data quality and its newly launched website. So today we'll start off with presenting open orgs and the rationale behind the service and why it's important for the open air graphs data quality. After that, we'll run through um, the new website and then break down how you can participate and contribute as an open orgs curator yourself. And then we'll finish off with 15 minutes of Q&A at the end. So we kindly ask you to, oh, actually, keep your microphones muted, but in this case, don't think you have a choice. <laughs> so, um, and we'll have, we'll open the floor uh, in the end um, to the Q&As, where you can either raise your hand, post in the chat, or in the Q&A section. So with that said, I'll pass the floor over to Ivana to get us started. Hi, uh, everyone, and thank you for coming. Just let me share my screen. Do you see it now? Yes. So uh, thank you, Alana, for the introduction. Um, here today, um, uh, presenting to you are uh, my colleague uh, Martina and also uh, me. Uh, what we will talk about uh, just a second. Um, let's go uh, through uh, the agenda for today. Uh, first up, we're going to talk about this pretty common issue, the challenges that come with organization affiliations. Next, we're going to talk about solving this problem uh, through open orgs and uh, give you an overview of the service itself, uh, what to deal with it and how can you benefit from it. Uh, then uh, we're going to skim through, as Alana said, uh, our new open orgs website. We'll navigate the site together pointing out key features and um, how you can make the most of it. And uh, then it's um, my colleague Martina takes over and it's all about you and our curators. Uh, we'll chat about how you can uh, pitch in and help because community expertise is the backbone, we can say, of what makes platforms like OpenOrgs work so well. We'll also delve uh, into why your knowledge, skill, knowledge and skills are invaluable and how you can share them uh, with the community. Uh, at the end, we'll also share with you an invitation to an open orgs training, which is a great way to learn more and get comfortable with uh, how you can contribute. And finally, as Alana said, we'll wrap up with a Q&A session and some concluding remarks. Uh, this is your time to ask questions and share your thoughts. Other than Martina and me, I think our colleague Claudio from CNR is also here. He's more knowledgeable, we can say, about the technical stuff behind open orgs. So if you have questions in that domain, Claudia will be here to answer those. So let's start. And uh, let me start by emphasizing the catchphrase that has become synonymous with open orgs. Uh, it's evident in the past webinars um, and sprints, and also uh, on the portal I will showcase later. So bridging registries of research organizations. Um, we can say that this title captures uh, the core message of the service itself, uh, which acts as a tool uh, for creating um, connections between existing initiatives that maintain uh, the identities of organizations involved in the research ecosystem. So OpenOrgs addresses a critical need within the open air infrastructure, um, offering an added value uh, to other open air products. So essentially, it's a tool for managing the uh, disambiguation of um, organizational entities and enhancing the metadata quality that describes these entities. So let's address the problem at uh, hand, uh, the ambiguity of information, uh, which significantly impacts the quality of data foundational to scholarly communication system. Specifically regarding organizations, uh, information is scattered across various data sources, uh, leading to inconsistent representations through legal names, full names, acronyms, uh, short names, aliases, etc. Moreover, uh, organizational structures often appear unclear, such as the division into branches, uh, faculties or departments. Uh, further complicating clarity across data sources. Uh, this ambiguity um, poses a substantial challenge, making it uh, imperative to disambiguate this information 
to ensure the efficiency of the scholarly communication system. Also, this ambiguity not only affects uh, the entire system, but also complicates the development of uh, robust uh, services essential for advancing open science and science in general. Uh, so why do we need this unambiguous, clear information? For example, um, clear information is crucial uh, for researchers seeking to search and discover, enabling services that facilitate the findability of research outputs. Uh, then research performing organizations uh, require services to aggregate and showcase their scientific production. Uh, similarly, research funding organizations need more uh, need monitoring services to have consistent information uh, on the impact generated by their funding. Uh, and in general, all stakeholders want open science services that are fun functional and up to date. Uh, highlighting the critical nature of this disambiguation issue. Um, within um, open air, uh, organizations are introduced uh, through the open air aggregation subsystem, uh, which gathers information about organizational entities from a diverse range of um, data sources, each presenting the data in its unique way. On the left side of the screen, uh, you notice names such as Open Door, R3 Data, Corvis, Grid Roar, uh, among others, which um, are key co contributors of organization lists um, to the uh, open arts. And uh, because we are collecting information from many different sources, it is not easy to determine whether the information refers to the same organization. Organizations are mentioned in various ways as responsible bodies for managing data providers, as managers or beneficiaries of projects, and as um, affiliations sorry, uh, of researchers in the full text of uh, articles and papers. However, how harvesting data from these sources presents challenges, such as the lack of common identifiers across all initiatives, despite the existence of IDs uh, for organizations. This often results uh, in the same entity being represented differently across sources. And just as just an example here, um, how this looks in open orgs when it is already curated, um, we can see here all of the different uh, versions of the same organizations that come from various uh, sources. So here, here we have Open Door, um, National Science Foundation, Roger Boskovic Institute Library, this is from the project database, etc. So these are all the curated duplicates of the same institution. You see here that um, different names can be used, um, names in um, English, names in the national language, etc. So um, um, this often results uh, in the same, um, sorry, um, um, the primary uh, issue um, in reconciling this uh, data is uh, disambiguating and finding duplicates among these mentions. Uh, of organizations. Um, Open Air began addressing uh, these issues through an automated system that, despite being uh, configurable to various criteria, faced uncertainties due to data incompleteness. Uh, the current matching algorithm employs a method that groups organizations by legal name and website URL, then performs uh, pairwise comparisons uh, within each group. <clears throat> However, um, a significant challenge uh, is the often lacking uh, comprehensive uh, information across different data sources. Um, among the fields that describe an organization, only a couple of characteristics could be used to drive uh, the matching. Namely, you can see here in this table, the legal name is uh, basically always present as a strongly distinctive characteristic along the uh, website URL. Um, in many cases, other information is not available. Uh, so as a consequence, an automated mechanism cannot really take a decision 
and so on, alone to state if the two mentions uh, of a given university or a research institution or a school are the same or not. So even if it's, let's say, a large portion of the data was correct or disambiguated, the uncertainty start to harm the quality of the results at the end. Um, so these inaccuracies or limitations um, in disambiguation pose several issues, uh, such as gen generating false positives um, that then skew statistics and affect the reliability of searches in open air portals. Uh, if our data isn't precise, we might miss some important details. For instance, if we are focusing on just one org in open org, we might not see all the services or products it offers. Similarly, if we try to look at the big picture, and consider all institutions in a country, we might not capture all the relevant services or products uh, for each uh, of those institutions. Uh, also, when using a search tool, for example, like Open Air Explorer, uh, to find information about a specific institution, we might end up uh, with several entries uh, that in reality refer to the same place. Um, this makes it hard to get a clear and accurate understanding of uh, what we're searching, researching. On the other hand, um, false negatives can also cause similar issues. Uh, for instance, uh, when different aspects of the same organization, like its research papers and projects, are treated as if they belong to separate uh, entities. So let's say the projects belong to University of Zagreb, and the research papers belong to uh, Zagreb University. Essentially, this means we might overlook um, that all these aspects are actually part of the same organizations. But for some uh, case, it has a different name, even though it's the same. Sorry. Uh, the visual here uh, resemble what was uh, the previous approach in open air. Initially, there was a direct link between the application system and the open air portals. Uh, this means the results uh, from the application um, system would automatically show up in these portals here. However, due to uh, problems with uh, accuracy and reliability, as I said, a decision was made to remove this um, direct connection, and that's when OpenOrgs was introduced. introduced. Um, this system acts as a middle layer, we can say, between the application system and the public portals. And um, as you can see here, um, within OpenOrgs, uh, the data, data cure, metadata curators play a crucial role. Um, they review and mediate the information produced um, by automated algorithms before it is shown to users on the open air portals. <clears throat> um, well, this you know this change aims to improve the quality and reliability of the information that users see. So as we have um, seen in the previous uh, slides, uh, open air services benefit from um, organization uh, disambiguation. Services that are most affected with this situation and the problem of ambiguity of the metadata are these that you can see here. So open air explore, monitor, connect, open science observatory. Uh, to these services, um, curation work can be really helpful and useful. Um, because the organizations resulting from the data application uh, and enhanced by the user feedback are indexed and then exposed by the open air uh, portals. So in summary, you can say that the process of organization disambiguation significantly enhances uh, the effectiveness and utility of the open air services by ensuring that data and metadata are accurate and clearly attributed. This in turn supports better uh, research outcomes, better link, uh, interlinking of research outputs, 
uh, enhanced discoverability, more effective monitoring, and the advancement of the open science initiatives. So to recap and give you an overview, um, OpenOrgs is essentially based on three main activity pillars. Uh, the first is automated approach. Uh, we have, as we said, an algorithm which detects the similarity between organizations and it establishes uh, this similarity. But um, that uh, has to be accepted by the curator. Uh, so the second step uh, is um, the manual management of uh, duplicates. duplicates. Uh, this enables curators to manage um, these uh, duplicate suggestions by either confirming or denying them, recognizing that uh, some decisions can only be made uh, by humans. And the third pillar uh, is the metadata curation in which the curators can enrich the quality of data, basically, and improve the findability of organizations um, within the large space of data uh, uh, that OpenAir has developed. Um, so that's it on the short intro. Uh, let's hop on to the new portal, uh, openorgs.openair.eu. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's hop on to it and I will show you what it uh, offers. Uh, just a heads up, although there are all of these uh, complicated algorithms behind it, in the world of open air, open Earth is a small, rather simple service. And as such, we didn't want to complicate uh, things much on the, on the por portal itself, but uh, still wanted to give you all the info and also provide uh, some sort of online everyday support for our curators. So when you first uh, come on, up on the, the page, this is what you will see. Uh, as I already explained, the bridging registry sketch page has uh, became synonymous with open arms since its beginning. So uh, we want to showcase it here also. Right in the hero section, uh, you have two buttons uh, for the two, I would say, most important things uh, to either explore open orgs and uh, start the curating or become its curator. Mm, we'll go over these a bit later. Um, other than that, we also wanted to showcase um, who the key beneficiaries of the service are. Uh, we went over those uh, at the beginning, if you remember when he talks about who actually needs unambiguous and clear information. So just to recap, um, the key beneficiaries are researchers, RPOs, RFOs, and basically, in essence, entire research community. Then we have a section on um, section named Why Open Orgs, where you can expect uh, to find information about Open Orgs capabilities and benefits including how it enhances the discoverability of research organization, uh, how it integrates uh, different organization and registries, resolves duplicates, uh, also uh, curates metadata, and uh, features this uh, curated information on the open air portals. Uh, the next part is very dear to me because uh, it showcases that Open Arts doesn't just talk the talk, it walks the walk. Uh, here you can explore um, case studies which illustrate the impact Open Arts has on a research collaboration and the global uh, research landscape. These examples highlight the tools, capabilities, and the difference it makes. Uh, so it basically, so basically by clicking on them, you can uh, explore real cases from Serbia, Greece, and uh, Cyprus. So let's just click on one of them. It will lead you here. Here you can read all about it, get an overview, and see what was the challenge and scenario, um, how they implemented the, soli the solution, and the impact it had on the on their community. Also details with screenshots from the service. Okay, let's go back up here and check out the menus. So on the about menu, um, two main articles pop up. One is about um, open, orgs in, open orgs in general, the problem statement, etc. 
and the other is about metadata curation. Let's check out the first one. Uh, so here we have the main problem statement um, and how OpenOrgs works to solve that problem. Uh, it is explained that OpenOrgs works uh, by using automated workflows and curator feedback to deduplicate and manage organizational records. So this is basically the magic that happens behind OpenOrgs, but explained in a simple manner. For uh, those of you eager to delve into the nuts and bolts of open arts, the data curation uh, section offers, um, let's say, a deep dive into the processes and practices uh, that ensure the high standards of data quality. We have a few things here, uh, but overall, this section of the website highlights the community-driven nature of open arts underscoring its role in enhancing the open air graph with clear and accurate data uh, to elevate research quality. Uh, the thing that pops up on this page immedi immediately are the benefits we get from data curation. Um, Martina will mention them later, but let's just briefly go over them. Um, the curation work in open orgs plays a significant role in enhancing the functionality and accuracy of the graph, contributing in several uh, ways. So data quality and accuracy, enhanced discoverability, interlinking of research outputs, compliance and reporting, facilitating research assessment and metrics and supporting the open science movement. Next year, we have a section on how you can help and the roles and responsibilities of data curators. Um, furthermore, curation methodology, and these are the activity pillars, pillars we talked about earlier. And lastly, uh, an overview of metadata that is available for curation. So you can enrich uh, organizational entities by uh, adding official name and type, adding geographical location, uh, acronyms, aliases, identifiers, also URLs, and relations, uh, which are very, very valuable because you can define hierarchies between organizations such as departments, institutes, subunits, etc., clarifying the structure and enhancing the understanding of the organization's composition and scope. On the About menu, we have a few more articles. Uh, the website provides a statistical overview of the services reach and impact with over 70 curators from 24 countries and more than 100,000 curator, curated organizations across 200 uh, countries and territories are set stick to the, um, I would say, vibrant community and collective effort driving open orgs forward. Um, the website also introduces you to the team uh, behind open orgs. Uh, here you can meet uh, the service managers, some of the data curators who are actively involved also in the development of the service, um, and all the people who actually made uh, open orgs, such as developers, data engineers, and the data scientists. Also, um, we also introduce you to the newly formed curation board, uh, which is a dedicated team with one goal, <laughs> to enhance the quality and reliability of research organization uh, metadata globally. Uh, beyond day-to-day -day curation task, uh, tasks, the board actively engages with the open arts community, providing feedback, answering questions, etc. Uh, for new curators jo joining the platform, the Curation Board provides um, training resources, guidelines, and ongoing support um, to ensure that uh, they are all well equipped to contribute effectively. So whether you're a potential curator looking for guidance or a researcher with questions about our data, the Curation Board is here to ensure your open org experience is both rewarding and impactful. Okay, let's go to another uh, tab in the menu called support. 
And here we have a few things to go over. Uh, let's go look first at the supporting material. Uh, as of now, um, available here, you have six tutorials covering different aspects uh, of uh, data curation. Uh, so first we have an introductory um, tutorial called uh, Understanding Open Orgs. Then we dive deeper into the metadata enrichment and curation, uh, approval of new orgs, curating duplicates, resolving conflicts, uh, establishing relations. And uh, more will be added soon, of course. Um, other than this, uh, whether you're um, new to data curation, or an experienced curator, our glossary section explains key terms used throughout the service, making sure you have a solid understanding of our processes and objectives. Of course, there is also a um, frequently asked questions uh, section where you can find the answers to most of your questions. Um, we have a general section and also a section about the curation process. Uh, so here you can find the answers to questions like what qualifications do I need to become a curator for open orgs or can I contribute to open orgs if I'm not a prof professional curator, etc. Martina will go over these uh, two. It is important to note that the materials uh, in this um, Many will be updated uh, regularly. This is something that evolves over time, of course. We plan on updating the application itself, and with that, uh, new materials will come, probably new functionalities and terms to add to glossaries, new questions arise, and so on. Um, in the menu, we also have uh, this publications uh, section, which leads to the um, new open, uh, open air graph site. Uh, this is something for those who want to know even more. Uh, you can find here the articles on the application um, and um, research more about it. And of course, we have a help desk here with a contact form uh, where you can ask questions, add comments, which will then be sent out to our um, open air help desk. And another thing you might have noticed in the menu, uh, how to become a curator. Uh, this is something Martina will go over in detail, uh, but just know that there uh, that here you can reach out to us uh, through this form if you want to join uh, the team and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And the cherry on top, let's go back to the homepage for this one. To explore the service itself, um, there are two buttons. One is here in the hero section. The other one is in the menu. Uh, click on it and it will lead you to uh, the sign-in page. Um, and after you, after you sign in, um, you will be directed to the open org service. If you are not yet a curator, you can send a request for becoming one through this um, sign-in as well. Uh, the interface of the application itself will change in the near future, and I, I hope <laughs> to make it uh, compatible to the service uh, website we've seen just now. And this is where uh, my tour is uh, ending. And Martina, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Ivana, uh, for the presentation uh, so far. And hello to everyone from me. My name is Martina, and I am part of the uh, I'm a data curator and part of the newly formed curation board, as you and I has mentioned. And I'll be talking to you about the role of data curators and how you can become part of our open source uh, community. So first, let's start things off by exploring how you can help. Uh, so as data curators, uh, you are uh, you play a vital role in curating and enriching metadata for organizations, ensuring that information is accurate and comprehensive. This involves identifying and resolving duplicates, uh, both algorithm uh, suggested and manually identified. You also establish parent-child relations to create organizational hierarchies, approve organizations that add them uh, to uh, our uh, database and gives them a stable open orgs uh, ID. 
as well as uh, add new organizations to the database, document your insights in the notes section, and resolve conflicts through uh, either merging or distinguishing organizations. Now, uh, there are two cur uh, curator roles in the open orgs community. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, the user. So as a user, your scope of data curation is typically limited to a set of countries. Uh, as a data curator, you are editing and enriching the metadata of organizations. You are approving suggestions from the automated duplicate uh, identification, and you are potentially creating new organizations that then pend national admin approval. The second one, uh, so the national admin, the uh, national admin curator role has a similar responsibility, but with the ad additional task of giving uh, final approval to new organizations, managing user access within their nation, resolving conflicts and making decisions on suggested organization and finalizing their approval status. Uh, now, why do we need you? And what would be the benefits of uh, curating within the open orgs? Now, your expertise is unparalleled, especially when it comes to knowledge of your country's research uh, landscape. Your contributions are vital in enhancing the open air platforms, ensuring that shared information is thorough and accurate. Your input also helps maintain up-to-date and precise data about research organizations. It increases the visibility of research outputs, projects, and data sets. And it also simplifies the adherence to open access regulation, which in turn promotes greater transparency and accessibility in research. Uh, next that I'll be talking about are the skills of a data curator. Now, as a data curator, you will need expertise in research organizations within your chosen country, uh, as well as awareness of major research institutions and universities and national or regional research information systems. Uh, you also need to be familiar with national or regional research information systems. Uh, other than these uh, specialized skills, as we have labeled them, uh, there are some general skills that we uh, think um, a data curator should have, and those are the attention to detail, strong data uh, management skills, analytical skills, technical proficiency, and problem solving skills. If uh, all of this uh, resonates with you. We encourage you to join our team as a data curator. And as Ivana has mentioned, the process of becoming a data curator, if you are interested in it, it's, kind, it's pretty much straightforward. Uh, as Ivana has showed you, there is an online form which you, which you fill out and that expresses your interest in becoming a data curator. After that, you will have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a member of the curation board. So either Ivana Boyan or me. And in that meeting, we will be discussing your role as a data curator in more detail and also answering any or every question that you may have. After that, after that meeting, you will receive a comprehensive uh, training on how to use open, the OpenOrgs platform effectively. You'll sign a volunteer statement outlining your rights and uh, responsibilities. And once you are accepted, you will be ready to start contributing as a valued member of our data curator community. Now, if all of this uh, that Ivana has said and showed you and what I have said about becoming, about being a data curator and becoming one, as uh, if this has sparked your interest, we also invite you to join us for an engaging training session on open orgs. Uh, the training session is scheduled for the April 15th and it will take uh, from the 2.30 to 4.30 uh, Central European time. 
during this session, it will be different than this webinar. It'll, you will gain a deeper understanding of how OpenOrgs operates. You will learn about the workflow involved in data curation, and you will participate in a hands-on session where you can ask questions that are tailored to your country's context. Um, and this is it from me so, uh, so far. And now we've already had the Q&A time, but uh, if there are any more questions, we can uh, answer them now. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, we do have uh, another question or two. And then, of course, um, so now that the Q&A session is officially open, feel free to also raise your hand, anyone, if you have a question. So you can type it in the chat in the Q&A or uh, simply raise your hand. So um, first off, we have will open orgs um, also have API interfaces for query and use all the collected data? And this is from Jordan Pichet. Yes, Claudia, thank you. I think I can answer that. For the moment, no, but it's in the plan uh, indeed to support uh, interfaces, programmatic interfaces for uh, returning back the added value uh, built inside of OpenOrg, thanks to the disambiguation activities. So I cannot provide yet a timeline. Uh, it has to be evaluated and prioritized with the rest of other, many other activities OpenAir is involved with, but uh, yes, this is the idea. Um, and anyone else uh, in the audience, you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. A reminding that a reminder that the record we this is recorded. Um, and what we can also do is we can send the registration link here in the chat for the curation training webinar. Um, that way, if you didn't have a chance to get the QR code, um, you can have that now. So we'll just share that. If you'd like to, um, if you're interested in becoming a curator, we have the training session, as Martina said, on the 15th of April from 2.30 to 4.30 uh, CEST. And then here is the registration link. There's a question here. So that it sounds very time consuming and how is the experience of current data curators in this scale? I'm a data curator and it is time consuming but once you get a whole, once you get in the rhythm of uh, curating, it it becomes easier and easier. Um, um, we will explain more how to curate and what what the workflow is in the training session. But um, once you kind of know where what uh, what type there of organization there are and how the how the duplicates work and how the suggestions work, I think it becomes more and more uh, easy. So yeah, I don't know if Ivana has anything to add to this. No, I agree with you. I mean, nobody expects from you to work on it eight hours a day. It depends yeah. on your schedule, yeah. Great, thanks. The question is, if we indicate in open orgs that some records of one Zenodo community are affiliated to an organization, will future records of that community automatically be linked to that organization? So this is link about linking open orgs to Zenod communities, same for other institutional repositories. Uh, I'm just thinking, uh, maybe this is something Claudia can answer, yes? Yeah, let him speak. Hello, hi everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so to answer that question, the linking between the affiliation information coming from Zenodo depends on the availability of such information in the meta metadata record that Zenodo uh, delivers to Open Air, but not only to Open Air, to everyone through the OAIPMH export format. So let's imagine that Zenodo exports the raw identifier of that uh, organization, indicated as an affiliation of the authors of a given deposition. Uh, then OpenAir is capable to capture uh, that raw identifier and use it to assign all the products to that specific institution. So this is how the integration uh, works. 
However, if open air uh, is uh, aware of multiple variations of the same institution, then it might be needed to perform some curation, indeed to disambiguate them. In general, in Explore, in this case, those organizations would appear uh, in multiple occurrences. So until the curation is done, uh, might not be straightforward to identify, to, to search it and identify it in Explore uh, right away. So this might need some time to uh, perform the curation and update the index, but uh, th that's how it works. Okay, so we have also, um, this was already answered in the question and answer, but just so we have it recorded for those um, who weren't able to make it watching the recording. Um, when you become a curator, is that only for your own organization? No, I think Claudia, yes, you answered it. Uh, it is not only for your organization. You will get the right to uh, curate uh, all of the um, uh, institutions in your country. So you can uh, curate all of them. But yeah, if you want to curate only your own uh, organizations, yeah, you can. Thank you. And we have. Okay. All right. So another one. Um, we have what's the benefit of curating data that's not from your own organization nor linked in any way? So Martina talked about this too. Um, the benefits are, I would say, global because um, it um, benefits in your own country, uh, you know, you work for a higher good, I would say. Um, and all of the research outputs uh, get met and, uh, you know, um, attributed to the right organizations and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I can support what Ivana said in, in or to give another angle. It would, in general, improve the overall quality. Uh, of the data, so to better support their discoverability. So maybe today some organizations might not be linked to uh, research outputs, but maybe tomorrow they will. Uh, perhaps the platforms that host the repository, that host the products that uh, are from that institution are not today supporting uh, the exposition of affiliation information, but maybe tomorrow they will. So it's important to uh, disambiguate information anyway, to leverage on the persistent identifiers. Perfect, thank you. Um, and then we have another one. Um, is there, so I think Julie said you can respond to this one. Is there any relation between open air and some editor repositories, Elsevier? Uh, yes, I can answer. Uh, so, um, in uh, uh, in general, in the open air graph, we are uh, uh, making uh, uh, data exchange agreements uh, with the publishers and editors in order to have metadata from them. Um, so, uh, this is uh, part of our agreement and the transparency that we have uh, in the open air graph. Uh, other than that, uh, um, we don't do that much unless, uh, uh, I don't know if Claudia would like to comment or it's fine. Uh, actually, I think you summarized uh, the situation. As far as I know, Open Air is only uh, collaborating uh, with some publishers to experiment on some research activities, but that's it. We are getting some uh, metadata from them and some full text from them. But that's it. Great, thanks. All right, so that looks like all the questions in the Q&A and the chat. Are there any other questions? I don't think I see any hands raised. We can also uh, add uh, uh, to what uh, was said before in terms of uh, the time-consuming activities. Um, it's also true uh, what uh, uh, Martina said, but uh, we are organizing two sprints per year to help you to do together. 
So it's going to be also a community activity. And we would like uh, you to, became, uh, um, to be part of these curation activities. So don't feel that it's uh, just uh, a constraint from you. Uh, it's actually something that uh, um, it can be uh, of the benefits for uh, the country. You will have uh, more visibility. Um, so we will uh, also amplify the section that is uh, on uh, uh, the curator's activities and how it looks like. Uh, so be part of our community and don't be afraid of it. Perfect, thanks. Um, and we just have uh, another, oh, oh, sorry, it looks like I thought I was muted. Um, it looks like we have uh, another question coming through. So if national curators will do it for all other institutions in the country, how many curators will be accepted per country? I don't think we have a general consensus on that. So at this point we are, you know, who, whoever wants to and whoever can uh, join, we are encourage you to join. Um, how sorry. Uh, what? How will they organize what? The the trainings. Um, I think. Um, how will the curation be organized? Oh. Oh, so who will curate which data? Uh, this is something we leave to the teams um, in the country. So uh, whenever we get um, requests for curation, and if there are people from that country already uh, curating, we you know um, we send them an email, uh, say who who who's who everyone who's uh, in that country and who's a curator, and uh, it's up to them what they will curate. It's up to them, you know. Mm, agreement. Can I add something else? Again, to, to com give another angle. Uh, I think different countries might require different level of efforts to perform the curation. Some countries uh, do have a lot of research performing organizations and might require a more structured approach. And finding someone that is actually knowledgeable on how to address the disambiguation task in different languages can be challenging. So uh, once uh, we, I think my perception is that once a given country has a certain uh, base of curators, uh, then the time will come to organize some meetings maybe on how to shape the curation activity per country. Some approaches could be reused also in countries that feature similar characteristics, maybe small to medium uh, by number <laughs> of organizations, of course, uh, but large countries might require a dedicated uh, approach, a more structured approach. But this is up to uh, the specific curation board. So those that do enroll to perform the curation to organize, of course, open air will be there to support and to guide them But we'll see. Consider that by now, who is requesting a monitor dashboard for their own organization, we are giving the opportunity to create the data. Uh, so they will have uh, uh, um, uh, more curator, uh, more curated dashboards. Uh, but uh, also we are open to the members. Uh, so if you would like to uh, contribute to the data in uh, open air, but also have an active role in open air, uh, you can contact the nodes of your country and uh, um, require to be also a member of open air. And this is, will give you an extra visibility and uh, extra opportunity to uh, co-curate, co-design with us the services. Thank you. Um, will there be a public list of curators? Uh, for now, no. Uh, but we will think about it. <laughs> but for now, no, no, it is not public. So it looks like someone's uh, looking to know if there's already a curator. How, so how do we know if there's already a curator in our country? 
for now, you can reach out to us at, I will write an email here, um, open or uh, admin. And uh, we'll tell you if there is anyone already curating for your country, of course. Anything else? So a reminder, so the, the webinar has been recorded um, and we'll upload it to the open air um, YouTube channel. And then also, I think we have the list of everybody here. We can email you um, those links as well. So you can go back and watch and also see where to find certain things in the website and who to contact when. All right, so no last final notes, anything? All right, looks like not. Okay, so I guess we'll give you four minutes. So you have four minutes before your next meeting to get some more coffee. And oh. <laughs> thank you everyone so much for joining us. It was great to, um, it's great presenting open orgs to, to you all. And thank you again to our presenters, Martina and Ivana, uh, for giving us such a, a good walkthrough. And it looks like we had some good comments on the website as well. People said they liked the <laughs> interface and it looks very user friendly. So congratulations. <laughs> Job well done. All right. All right. Well, I think we'll leave it there. Thank you again, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye.